Hi guys, I thought I'd share with y'all a really cool amateur radio project that I stumbled across on YouTube. I studied on it a little bit and I figured that uh, I'd give it a shot and see what I thought about it. I've been really impressed. And what you're looking at is called Ham Clock, H-A-M-C-L-O-C-K. It's available as a free software download for Raspberry Pi. It will also run on other hardware platforms and it will run on different size displays as well. What you see it running on right now is the official seven inch touchscreen for Raspberry Pi. And it will run on older Raspberry Pis. It will also run on the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. I do recommend the Zero W with the built-in Wi-Fi. I'm actually running it on a older Raspberry Pi uh, Model B which does not have built-in Wi-Fi, but I do have a Wi-Fi dongle plugged in the USB port. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about where you can get uh, the software. It's coming from a website called Clear Sky Institute, and the easiest way I found to get it was to just go to Google, and you're going to search for Ham Clock, and you'll see a link in your results for Clear Sky Institute. If you want to run it on the Raspberry Pi, you're going to click on the desktop tab and scroll down and you'll see the instructions for getting it installed. And I will say that the instructions are written pretty well. There's a lot of amateur radio related projects for the Raspberry Pi. And a lot of them that I've tried to implement, the instructions are poorly written, are written for somebody that has a lot of knowledge with Linux and I'll say that uh, I'll be the first to say actually that I don't claim to be a Linux guru by any means so if the instructions are written well enough for me to follow them and do it they must be pretty good with that said let's uh, review some of the information that you're looking at here on the screen when you first install ham clock and boot it up it'll give you the option to go in and configure things like your call sign uh, if you happen to let that time out and it boots into uh, what you see here, uh, you're going to see the software creator's call sign up here at the top. And the easiest way to change and configure this stuff uh, once you've got to this screen is there's a little lock indicator right here. It's kind of uh, hard to see, but it's, it's a little square box with like a loop at the top. If you touch that and hold it, or if you have a mouse connected, you can... Uh, take the, the little, there's a little red mouse pointer you can take up there and just click and hold on that lock. I'll do it right quick. Let me see if I can find, there's a little mouse pointer. You're going to hold on that lock and then let go. And it'll give you the option to either resume, shut down, or restart. So if you want to go into configuration, you're going to restart it. I'm going to go back to resume. All right, and as it's loading some of this information on the screen, we'll start over here in the left corner. Of course, it is a clock, so you have your universal uh, time clock, UTC. And just next to that is the solar flux. And next to that is the KP index. And then you have an image of the sun here. If you had any sunspots, you would see those sunspots in that image. And all the way on the right-hand side, you have uh, beacon information. So the beacons are color-coordinated, and it shows their frequencies out next to it. And you'll also see the beacons displayed on the map as well. Now, uh, the ham clock is displaying, of course, a, a lot of information that is relevant to someone that is interested in amateur radio or listening to shortwave. So... A lot of this is uh, super useful. The map, for instance, is showing us where the gray line currently is. And then you'll see where the sun is shining and where it's dark. The red dot indicates my location. And you can also see the location of the sun and the moon. You can configure the map to display uh, the locations in real time for amateur radio satellites and the International Space Station. You can also get uh, some different map views in here, but I like this particular one that you see now. 
Uh, below the map, you'll see that you can configure it for an RSS feed. And uh, the feed that you're gonna uh, get by default is just basically delivering you uh, some amateur radio related topics. Uh, you can go to eHAM, for instance, and search for this headline and, and be able to read that. So let's move over here to uh, the two boxes you see below the time clock. The top box with DE in it is going to be my location, and that correlates with the red dot. And below that, the DX box is uh, anywhere that you want to uh, click on the map. You can click with your mouse pointer. And since this is a touch screen, I'm just going to actually touch. So let's say that there was um, some radio signals that you were interested in coming from uh, Australia, for instance. So let's go over here and we will attempt to move the green dot over to Australia. If I can get it to do that. Let me try my other, there we go. All right, so that's gonna give you, you know, your RF uh, direction of travel. And it also changes the information that's being displayed in this box to give you the bearing heading and degrees that you can utilize if you have a directional antenna uh, to point it and hopefully get the best signal. The boxes across the top are also customizable. So if you see the solar flux here, but if I tap that, it will take us um, to a, a basically a, a screen that's showing us the different amateur radio bands and the bands that are showing activity on them right now. If we tap here, we can get additional information. And also get our sunspot data. Like I said, there's no sunspot, so that's showing zero. And you can turn the RSS feed off just by tapping down there where it says RSS and you just have the map. So I found this to be extremely uh, useful. And I already had an older Raspberry Pi and the seven inch touchscreen laying around. And when I saw this project, I was like, man, this is something I really need to try. And I've enjoyed it. I thought I'd make a video about it to kind of give y'all some ideas about what you could do with it. I'll flip it over too so you can see the hardware. This just snaps off the back here. And then there you have the Raspberry Pi computer. And on the end, I have a Bluetooth dongle in this USB port. And the rear port, I have the Wi-Fi dongle plugged in there. You can configure this also so when the Raspberry Pi boots up, it automatically goes to ham clock, or you can start it from the terminal. I would definitely suggest that you read over the instructions that are on the Clear Sky Institute website and do some research on the web. There are other um, videos on YouTube with regards to ham clock, and I think you would enjoy it. I think you would really like to have this in your shack and be able to get real-time information displayed right in front of you. So I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more content out in the future. And take care. We'll say 73.